Hey guys, Loman02. I want to share a series of vintage games. So, a lot of folks think of vintage being a turn one format, and while I have showcased a few vintage decks that are certainly turn one, I think I've even showcased some turn one kills with vintage decks. Um, this is exactly the opposite. So, I'm playing Bug, Vintage Bug. Um, it runs stuff like Ramunek, Ramunap Excavator, Lay of Old. Um, you know, it has the general suite of counter spells, but essentially at the end of the day, it's a null rod deck. So if you're not familiar with uh, fish decks, um, if you haven't played vintage for a little while, um, a lot of the old fish decks used to be called rod decks. Um, null rod, I think, is in a decent place right now because uh, both um, Dark Ritual Storm um, or whatever the Bargain Storm um, or MPO Storm both run a significant amount of uh, artifact mana, and I think both are pretty prevalent right now. And I think this deck is decently well positioned. The issue still is, you still require um, mental missteps, uh, especially against Bargain Storm and Force of Will um, against those style of decks, because this deck is not exceedingly fast, but once it establishes its lock, which tends to happen around turn 2 or 3, then it can generally constrict those sort of decks off. So, this is a pretty easy uh, opener to keep. Um, I go ahead and lead off on Wasteland here, um, not knowing what I'm playing against. Uh, well, correction, I do know what I'm playing against. So, I'm playing against Dredge, because I, I saw my opponent Serum Pound. That's why I let on Wasteland, because I was kind of wondering, I'm like, why would I lead on Wasteland here, unless I wanted to like hide the fact that I would, like think I was Shops or something with a really bad hand. Um, the reason I did this is because I know they're going to play a Bizarre Baghdad. So, I actually, it's very rare that you want to Wasteland on your opponent's turn, but I do think in this case, I do want to Wasteland on my opponent's turn. They mulliganed slash serum powdered into a bizarre Baghdad uh, very deliberately, but the reason I want to wasteland is it's going to give me more information. And it's going to preclude them from knowing what they need to keep because some sh or some uh, dredge decks, which I'm playing against right now, do play mental misstep, do play force of will. Some even play mind break trap. Generally, it's a sideboard card though. Um, so if I do this on their turn, it's going to limit um, the amount of information they have about what I'm playing because wasteland doesn't really tell you much. I could be shops even. Um, when I start this way, if I was shops, Probably not. I'd probably just, you know, put all my crap on the board, puke my board out, and then wasteland them on the following turn. But this at least, you know, gives them more to think about. So I wait on wasteland. They, of course, have a bazaar. I go ahead and wasteland them on the end step, forcing them to uh, go ahead and turn their bazaar on now. They have an Icarid, a Cabal Therapy, Dread Return. So they didn't mulligan into a great hand off of the Serum Powder uh, because they have no Dredgers. So they were obviously looking... They should have been looking for Dredgers there. They did not find any. I draw very well for my turn and find Deathrite Shaman. So after knowing that I'm playing against Dredge, because obviously I don't know what I'm, keep, what, I, what I'm keeping, and I'm just playing in the Dark against his opponent since they want to test a deck, um, No Rod is no good. Like, No Rod's a junk card. Jace Friend's Prodigy over time can be decent. But realistically, my hand kind of did nothing against Dredge except for Wastelanded, their turn one bizarre and hopes like hell they don't have another bizarre. But my draw step is very good here. I draw a Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman is actually a card that, you know, outside of being mental misstep bait, impresses me quite a bit. So they find another bizarre. I'm just like, okay, well, we're, we're getting the mad bizarre draw here. I do find a Leovold here, and actually, so this is interesting. So just to clarify something, I do ahead and get the bizarre out of their, their uh, graveyard. Right now they still failed to find Dredgers. So, the one cool thing about Leovold is, is that if Dredge has no Dredgers in their graveyard, then the Bazaar essentially says, one, you have to activate it on my turn if you even want to draw one of the two cards, but you're going to discard three cards. So, it takes it from being basically a three for two, or I'm sorry, a two for three, to a one for three um, exchange rate, which makes it infinitely worse, especially when they don't have Dredge. Now, keep in mind, and some folks may get confused with this. It's a kind of a weird ruling. Dredge is a draw replacement, so if it says draw two, even though Leovold says they can't draw more than one card each turn, they could still dredge two. So they could dredge one for their draw step and then dredge two off of the Bizarre Baghdad, because it is a draw replacement, which means it bypasses Leovold, bypasses stuff like Consecrative Sphinx, stuff like that. But I'm going to get the Leovold down, because at least right now, it's going to slow them down. I don't really generally expect to win Dredge uh, Game 1, but this deck packs a ton of Dredge hate. I think it's got four uh, four Graft Digger's Cages, which are just kind of like Oath Insurance and Dredge Insurance, and then three Ravenous Trap just to blow them out. So they do get the Icarid back this turn. I just go ahead and take the three here and like it. They play a Petrified Field, which is not bound to do very much this matchup. They activate their Bazaar accurately on my turn, so they can get the 1 for 3 exchange rate off of it. 
At this point, I just go ahead and get my Jace of Rin's Prodigy down because I figure I'm going to want to kind of get some of these useless cards out of my hand. The first card to go will be Null Rod. I'll keep Leofold over Null Rod because it pitches to Force of Will. Metal Misstep at a minimum stops the Cabal Therapy. Uh, find a semi-worthless creature in Manglehorn. Manglehorn is great in some matchups like Paradox, Galon Come Storm, but pretty bad against Dredge. I just continue to damage them here. I want to end the game as fast as I can so they can't find something relevant. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything good for uh, my Jace Friends Prodigy here. I find a Fatal Push, which is also quite bad, and at some point I'm probably just going to counter my own Fatal Push so I can get more food for my uh, Death Rite Shaman, because right now there are no more. there's only one more spell in the graveyard. Up to six cards in hand. Uh, they're going down to what here? Going down to three, yeah, three, now to zero. And they just go ahead and pack it in. So they didn't find the treasures they needed to find. Um, yeah, they serum powdered into the bazaar, which I think you pretty much keep most hands with bazaar, but there are definitely better bazaar hands and worse bazaar hands. Um, uh, a hand with no treasures in it is generally not good. And after seeing what they kept, they kept a bazaar with no counter magic and no treasures, which is kind of rough. So Death Rite Shaman beats, you know, and uh, and Leavold beats, take them down. Um, Leavold, not typically a card I would say does that much work against Dredge, did a lot of work against Dredge here because they did not have the Dredge-ers in their graveyard. And Death Rite Shaman, albeit, I think it is too slow to beat Dredge all on its own, um, especially in Vintage, because Bazaar is just so quick. It just dumps so much stuff into the graveyard. Um, and you can even use it to fog Death Rite activations um, to an extent. Uh, just beats up on them pretty badly. So, game two. We sideboard in four Grafdigger's Cages and three um, Ravenous Traps, taking out some of our worthless critters. Um, so we have Rab Trap and we have Death Rite Shaman. This hand's perfectly keepable, and if we ever find a Wasteland, the Ramanap Excavator can get rid of a Bizarre Baghdad. Go ahead, resolve. Uh, Death Rite Shaman it gets Force of Willed, which I'm pretty impressed by. I'm, I'm not going to force that back. I think I'm fine with that. I see Vampire Hex Mage. This is an older tactic. Um, some dredge decks have transformational sideboards where they turn into a Dark Depths Thespian Stage deck. Um, I'm not a huge fan. I especially don't like it against essentially a lands deck, which this kind of is. Uh, go ahead and resolve the Ancestral Recall here. I get a cage down and just leave the rest of the cards in my hand. I could use Gitaxian Probe, but I'd rather pitch Gitaxian Probe to Force of Will if I have to Force of Will um, a, uh, a Vampire Hex Mage. Now, obviously, we need to be a little leery of Dark Depths uh, slash Merit Lage because we're going to have a tough time beating that card because we don't have Swords of Plowshares in our deck. So, realistically, how we beat that is by finding a Wasteland, which is really what I want to find here. I just go ahead and abrupt decay my own Grafdigger's Cage to fuel my graveyard. And so, that may seem kind of bad, but my thinking is this. I have Ravenous Trap to protect it. And I really want to flip the Jace so I can cast my Ancestral Recall again. But what I opt to do instead is Time Walk because I just drew into the Wasteland. So I can get another turn, put the Ramunap Excavator down, and then Wasteland again. So I, I was very happy with these pickups. Um, you know, that was a very good draw. But my plan had originally been to Ancestral there to find Wasteland. Uh, but because I drew it, I just go ahead and time walk because I can get this guy down and then blow up two lands and get all kinds of value and get my Jace back up to three, which means I can sack it on the following turn to find, um, an, or to get the Ancestral if I want to. But I don't get rid of it here. Uh, my Ramonap dies, but I put the Pharaoh, the Vengeful Pharaoh, on top of their deck. Vengeful Pharaoh is kind of an odd one. I'm fine with that, though. They have no lands in play, so I really don't need to continue to just harass their mana base. So, the Abrupt Decay Grafdigger's Cage line is certainly weird, but I think it was actually the right line of play. They try to uh, use Petrified Field to get back a Thespian stage. I just exile it, make a mana. Um, that's a two for one, so I'm, I'd rather get the value than uh, just dome them for two. I'm not going to kill fast, but I'm going to kill pretty assuredly in this matchup because I have a Ravenous Trap that I could even hard cast at this point, and I'm just going to slowly dome them out with my Death Rite Shaman until they either concede or I find a better way to kill them. Um, I don't play out the Graph Cage here. I'd rather get to seven or eight cards, and ideally, this is fine, ideally um, find uh, uh, Library of Alexandria, which would be pretty good. So I continue just to dome them, find another Ravenous Trap, and they finally just concede. Like, they can't win this game uh, with with a Graph Cage down, Double Force of Will, Jace, um, you know, we feel pretty good here. At any point in time, I can even Ravenous Trap 
um, in a minimum of once. I actually get Ravenous Trap twice hard cast because of the Death Rite Shaman. So that was game. So Bug is an interesting spot. I think Bug is actually not that bad against shops. Um, it's not great, great against shops. It's not bad. I think it is good against like the really unfair decks, like the Storm decks. Um, but the match will tend to look more lopsided because they're either going to win extremely fast or they're going to lose really slowly. Um, and I guess the best way to equate that is it's kind of like watching Death and Taxes fight Reanimator. Like, Reanimator will either win really fast or it'll lose really slow, but it'll lose. Like, it's assured. Like, you, they could just concede and, like, it would be just as good. But, like, for some reason, they always play it out um, to the bitter end, even though their percent's, like, you know, less than 10%. You know, and that 10% is probably predicated on some amount of player on the other player's part. So, anyways, this is a bug um, in Vintage. And I'll pull up the deck list real fast uh, because I think the deck is pretty sweet and it's a fairly original, like, little brew. Bug decks were a big thing for a while. Like, when Tasker first came out, I remember there was, like, Tasker decks. Um, this deck, sadly, does not run Tasker, does not run Goyf, although Goyf would be an interesting sideboard card against Shops because I think that would definitely uh, it would give you a bigger, a bigger dude to fight against... Uh, the artifact fellows on the other side, but bug control here. Um, so it is a 19 land deck, which is fairly robust. Uh, it's a little less than land still, but pretty robust mana base because it runs four wastelands and a strip mine, um, as well as basically you know your standard run of uh, tropical islands and underground seas. One bayou, library of Alexandria, as far as utility goes. Very little uh, artifact mana. Uh, one black lotus for just you know one time you know just uh, mana ramp. Uh, the three mocks that are on color. Two null rods for disruption. I run a fatal push in this. I don't. It's it's good to stop a mentor, a miser's mentor, or stop um, a pyromancer, which is pretty decent disruption. One fluster storm main, which I like to have at least one of those main because it's just a good. Uh, a good um, hedge against Storm, and I think it's a little more flexible than uh, Mind Break Trap. Um, Deathrite Shaman, obviously, it's a bug deck, and Deathrite actually does a number against a lot of decks. Like, it's good versus the Yawgmoth's Will decks, especially if you can turn the game into a grind fest. Um, it's not bad versus Dredge. You can get key things out of their graveyard, uh, but typically speaking, if they play intelligently, they can play around it with Bizarre because they can draw at instant speed in response. Um, three Abrupt Decays. I am not sure on Abrupt Decay in that number. Um, I do run one Dismember main. Like, I may want a Dismember... Or, I'm sorry, I run one Dismember sideboard. I may want one Dismember main over one Abrupt Decay. Uh, Abrupt Decay does deal very well with Mentor, which is nice. But there's only one Mentor in each Mentor deck, na deck now. It does deal with Time Vault pretty well. I mean, being uncounterable is pretty big. But Dismember, I think, is just a bigger earner in the uh, stacks matchup because it just deals with, you know, their huge stuff, you know? Um, it it's, tends to be very good um, against stuff like... Um, uh, I can't think of the Golem that makes three three threes, uh, Precursor Golem, um, or even, you know, uh, other stuff in there. I mean, there's a significant amount. Two Energy Flux in the sideboard as well, because that is a tough matchup. Um, two Nature's Claims for the same thing. I have Manglehorn. Manglehorn's not bad versus Shops. Really, the reason I think Manglehorn makes the cut, this is probably the only format where it's actually playable, um, is because of all the artifact mana in the format and the Paradoxical Outcome Storm decks. It's kind of funny because, like, I equate Manglehorn to, like, being, like, Underworld Dreams. Like, if you're not familiar with Underworld Dreams, it's a three uh, converted mana cost BBB spell that says whenever uh, opponent draws a card, they take one damage. It's played in 93, 94, old school. It's played in absolutely no other format. Um, you know, and it used to be centralized around a combo deck that kind of operated similar to Megram, but as opposed to having Jar, uh, Memory Jar, it utilized uh, Time Twister, Winds of Change, and Wheel of Fortune, right? Um, but I, the reason I make this equivalency is because, like, Manglehorn is kind of in the same place in my mind as, like, Underworld Dreams. It's only really a playable card because of what other people play. So the strategy is predatory in a lot of ways. Raymond Ex Excavator, kind of the same thing. He's really a crucible on wheels. Um, you know, he can attack for two. He's not that big, but... Um, he tends to shore up the shops matchup because you can just get back value, get back lands. Although he's not exceedingly fast, so unless you get him down turn two off the Deathrite Shaman activation, typically speaking, you're going to have to fight it out with him for a while. Uh, but because you run more lands, your 19 land mana base, you tend to be able to draw into mana when you need to. Um, two JVPs, I think it's just they're just good value dudes. Um, time walk, yeah, it's an attack. Ba it's time walk's actually not bad in this deck. It's probably not quite as good as it is, or it tends to be in like a deck like Merfolk where you just have tons of creatures. But this is an attack deck, so time walk's not not too bad. Um, Trigon Predator, I don't know. Mostly for history. Plus, I wanted one more way to deal with artifacts because I don't have a ton main deck. 
Um, I really have to force of will the bad stuff, um, and then use no rod against the activated ability stuff. But like against stacks, like stack stacks, I want to have like one a one outer, like a one dude that could out it. But um, realistically, I need my energy fluxes to be like a true stacks list with this deck. Um, Sylvan Library, great against blue decks. Like big blue decks, like hate seeing Sylvan Library. It's almost a must force because if it lands, you're just gonna take eight and be like, all right, dude kill me, um, but I'm probably going to have my own Force of Wills, you know, and, and Big Blue has enough time dealing with it. Like, those decks tend to just win with, like, a combination of cards it, all at once, as opposed to, like, winning incrementally, so it's fine to go down to, you know, three to four life. It doesn't really matter. As long as you can Force of Will two more times, you're, you're probably okay. Um, and then you have the two Chase Mind Sculptors. You know, Chase is still just kind of king, in my opinion. Um, I could probably try to put a Karn there and see how Karn does. I don't know. I like Jace, though. When I get to run fetch lands, I think Jace is more powerful than Karn, but eh, that's just me. Uh, four Force Will. Yeah, it's a Force Will deck. Um, Gush could be tried in this deck. Um, there is one Bayou. It's a Wasteland deck, so I don't know. Gush is a little more iffy, in my opinion. But it is a powerful card, and I could possibly run one of in this deck. Uh, you know, Greens and Zenith, also another more questionable card, but the card is very powerful. Um, I have a lot of one-off creatures, excepting Leovold, that's a three-off. Um, and then the Deathrite Shaman, but everything else is a, is a... Well, I guess I have two JVPs, but most of them are, like, not four-of creatures in this deck. Um, so, Green Sun Zenith allows you to kind of operate as a toolbox to some extent. Obviously, we don't have four Green Sun Zeniths. We're not a true, true toolbox. But it's come up where it's been very powerful. And even finding just a Deathrite Shaman can be very crucial um, to put you at the right mana count against uh, certain matchups like, you know, shops where they have a sphere effect in play. Uh, additional Fluster Storm and Sideboard, Mind Break Trap, obviously Storm. Dismember, uh, Stacks, other creature decks. Uh, two by Nature's Claim, two by Energy Flux, Stacks. Um, Rap Trap by three, Graft Digger's Cage by four, uh, Dredge, and then Null Rod. Uh, some Shops variants, P.O. Storm. Just decks that, like, Angel City Vault decks, you know, or whatever. There's a lot of decks that, that, that Rod just totally shuts down. So that is Bug. I'm not going to do a complete deck tech on the remainder of these decks because they're fairly common decks, and they probably have my own proprietary blend in them, but they're not sizably enough different. So you've seen me play this before. I'm, I'm, so I'm testing decks with this uh, gentleman here, a uh, Lulumund. Lulumod, I can't say his name. Um, he's he wants to test his dredge deck against against a, a litany of different decks. Um, so I'm playing uh, Paradoxical Outcome Storm here. Uh, this is Grixis version, not an Esper version. Uh, I think if you've watched my vintage videos before, you've heard me heard me say uh, that I think the Esper version is better. Why don't I play it? I don't know. I like Wheel of Fortune too much, and I just like Grixis color probably better than Esper. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's better to have fragmentized, but but I don't because Stony Silence is a thing right now. Um, obviously, this matchup, this is probably better, because I think this deck actually goldfishes faster. This hand's fine, so it's a double forceful hand. I I keep it, like, I, I don't want to play this player and be like, just go in and be like, okay, I'm going to play exactly, I know they, they're playing Dredge, like, go in, this is the second game we played, I'm like, I'm not going to go in, like, just assuming they're playing Dredge. This hand is not great for Dredge, because it's not fast. Um, it's really more set up to beat a big blue deck, but um, I keep it because it is a keepable hand. Like, if I didn't know the matchup, I would keep this hand. Um, so find Opal here. Go ahead and ponder. Find the outcome, which is not half bad. And I go ahead and Chrome Mox here. Don't put anything underneath it. I actually screw up here. I think what I had to do is put something underneath it. Play the Soul Ring out. Actually, it wouldn't have worked, would it? Yeah, I couldn't have cast it all this turn. So they have a very good start. So they dredge. Um, find... Uh, two Cabal Therapies plus two Narcobibas, which is a huge time beating. I go ahead and force this because I don't really want them to take away my Paradoxical Outcomes as my way to win. And I just go ahead and concede it because I, I know, like, I don't think forcing it was per se correct. I think I would have saved the force if I were them because I can get more card advantage out of it if I screw up, if I don't play around their force. Um, I think they should have let it resolve and then Cabal Therapy me again and guess something else. The Force of Will was probably going to be the card they named with uh, Cabal Therapy in the dark because uh, there's a very good chance that when I'm playing Volcanic Island, I'm playing for Force of Will. Because I have two in hand, I opt just to burn them off. That way it counters their first Cabal Therapy, and their second Cabal Therapy off their Narcomoeba is blind, meaning that they probably have to guess more restricted cards. Seeing a Mox Opal and a Chrome Mox, I would probably guess Paradoxical Outcomes is the most dangerous card, and maybe because of that, I misplayed and should have left uh, Paradoxical Outcome um, on top of my deck with Ponder. 
it's very possible and just taking the artifact mana. Yeah, in retrospect, I probably misplayed that. I probably should have left PO on top of my deck. I don't think it was going to matter here because whatever I kept in my hand, they were going to force me to discard my soul ring um, or my defense grid, depending on what they had. Um, so, I don't know. Um, we could have had down a defense grid on turn one, though, if we'd exiled one of the Force of Wills. But as it turned out, if we had done that, regardless, we would have we would have assuredly lost that way. Um, this way, we at least gave ourselves an out to stopping you know the first Cabal Therapy with Force of Will um, to safeguard our hand and possibly go off on the following turn. But we'd be going off pretty light. It'd be, it'd be four cards, uh, but we'd have to tap our mana source. We still have a land drop, though, so we're not 0% to win if the turn gets passed to us without our hand getting devoured. Um, so, like I said, I still think that was a good keep. I put in uh, four Tormod's Crypt in this matchup. Take out Time Walk, Windfall, um, one Grim Monolith, and uh, two Preordain. Uh, also put in one Flusterstorm. This hand is great. So I'm going to go ahead and just recall here. They have no counter magic. I'm just going to dump the living crap out of my hand. They would have countered Ancestral Recall if they had counter magic. Like, there's no doubt in my mind, like, they, they would have. Like... I can't quite go off all the way this turn, uh, so I want to save the remainder of my hand so that I can Mind's Desire. And I actually do see a... Um, do see a... Uh, gosh, I can't think right now, guys. Um, the Brainstorm on top of my deck with um, an additional R with the Tormod's Crypt. So Tormod's Crypt gives me a lot of insurance. I go ahead and Mind's Desire here for a bazillion, which is what I wanted to set up and why I waited. Um, and it's just a win, because I, I get lucky and just hit really well. Their hand is complete garbage. They're trying to do the... Uh, I don't know why. they, they So, this opponent did something odd both games. Like they, they, It seems like their sideboard plan is like a set sideboard plan against every deck they play. So, like they had Dark Depths combo pieces in hand, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they had a bunch of Dark Depths in hand. Um, sideboarding into the Dark Depths plan against Paradoxical Outcome Storm is bad. Like... The Dark Depths combo is at a minimum a turn two combo. Um, I guess Dredge is about the same speed, but like the 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 possibility of Dredge working on turn two, the probability of it working on turn two is a lot higher depending on your keep than getting exactly Urborg, Dark Depths, Vampire, Hexmage, which they don't have. Uh, they don't play anything on their turn. I think they just realize like the game's probably over because they have no interaction. They have one dread return and then just a bunch of garbage. Maybe they accidentally clicked okay. Oh, you know what? I know what they were doing. They were trying to ditch their Golgari Grave Troll to dredge. Maybe. That's still not good, though. <clears throat> I don't know why they kept this hand. Um, I guess it's one combo piece away from working. But anyways, they get tendrils out off of a Mind's Desire. Um, even if it didn't work, I hit one PO. I have a Telerian Academy. I still have a land drop this turn, I believe. No, I don't, because I had to play another one. Um, so the Telerian Academy will be exiled forever, but I'll be drawing a bazillion cards, and I have two Tormod's Crypts down. Um, you know, So even if we had hit tendrils, we're pretty likely to win there. All right, uh, game three... So this hand is a bomb. Like this hand. So this is the risk of this hand. Like this hand. If ancestral recall does not resolve, this hand does nothing. So, you know, I, I it's close. But it also has a Tormod's Crypt. So even if the ancestral recall gets countered, like it's not terrible, terrible. We'll have to see how I played it out. I think I played the ancestral on my turn just to see if I can win. But I think the right play to the right way to have played this would have been Mana Crypt, Soul Ring off Mana Crypt Mana. Correction. It would have been Tormod's Crypt first, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Mox Opal, Black Lotus, Telerian Academy, Go, and then cast Ancestral Recall on their upkeep to prevent the recall from being uh, Mind Break trapped. Because there's no way you can Mind Break. Are you? Well, I guess you could play out like one of the artifacts and then tap the Telerian Academy, but like then they know you're not going off at that point. So I draw another like perfect card here, which. You know, this is what this deck is supposed to do. I mean, it's just a busted deck, right? So, I do this, and I figure if they counter it, then I will just go ahead and cast the Ancestral. Um, and we just, we win turn one, obviously, because we, we hit optimal. Like, we had a an explosive hand that, with Paradoxical Outcome plus Ancestral Recall, really can't lose. And because it has Tormod's Crypt, they can't really win fast, so I had draw steps. The hand was a definite keep. But it was risky, uh, but we got rewarded uh, for keeping it uh, by hitting the PO on top. I don't know if it was right or wrong. I mean, against their deck, like, I know they're playing at least Force of Will. Um, I didn't see mental missteps. 
I think I've seen like one or two mental missteps out of them. So I still think it was a keep. Um, and it obviously it works out. I mean, like if they don't disrupt this, like it's going to work. Like it, it'll kill them turn one. Um, so yeah, that was the PO matchup. I think PO is tends to be a tougher matchup for Dredge. Dredge can beat it, um, but it generally has to have like you know good disruption. Like if it if it doesn't win the die roll and it's like uh, and it's an unmasked deck. Um, slash discard version, like it relies solely on discard to disrupt, it's going to lose more than likely. Um, if it runs Force of Will, I think it can win pretty regularly. Um, so we're playing with Mentor this time against the same deck, Dredge. Um, I keep this hand. Well, one, like this hand's kind of a free roll because, like, I'm not supposed to beat Dredge with this deck on the in the first game, and it has a time vault. So, like, the way I look at this, like, there's two ways I can win game one against Dredge. I can either get the time vault key combo online, or I can like turn one Tinker into Bloodsteel Colossus and just hope it can outrace them. Um, those are really the only two ways I can win. Um, there's no other way. I do mental misstep this, and my hope is, is that the second one that I know they have in their uh, deck. Or question, this is only... They only have one. I mental misstep it to, like, act like I'm protecting something. They, uh... (laughs) They, uh, go ahead and mental misstep back, which is good for me because it means that my key is safer. Um, but they named Paradoxical Outcome because they think I'm playing the same deck. I'm actually not. This is actually a mentor list that just had a lot of busted mana. Uh, they have Forceful here for Dak, which I was going to try to use to find the, um... The, uh, key... Although, I think a better line in this would have been, because it's the same amount of mana, to Snapcaster, draw three off Ancestral Recall. The only risk to that is that it gets Mental Misstep, but I have my own Mental Misstep, so I think that was actually the wrong line for me to play Dak there. I think I should have Snapcastered, Ancestral, Ancestral myself, draw three as opposed to looting looting two, um, because it allows me to see one more card. As it turned out, it wouldn't have mattered because they had Force of Will, and they Force of Will my Dak, which means I'm dead regardless. I don't have a key, I don't have a way to dig right now uh, with an untap, and I'm is very, very dead on the next turn. Uh, they did Grave Return, or Dread Return, uh, but Kukari Grave Troll, which I, I mean... It's not exceedingly powerful, but well, it's it's big. It's big. I mean, that's like what it is. I mean, it's not like it, uh, it, t- it kills instantly. Um, I think they could have just waited a turn and then done it on their turn here and just gotten Cargan and Dragon Lord and won on the spot. But they're going to win anyways here um, from making that line of play. I guess it does fade one of my draw steps, so that's that's at least a thing. Um, so, anyways, yeah, we we lose the first one, but like we expect to lose the first game. Now, this deck has an interesting sideboard against Dredge. It has three Tormod Script, one Graft Digger's Cage, and three Containment Priests. We brought all of them in, and this is our opener. This hand is actually very strong. It says Force of Will or or Mental Misstep. And then it has a turn two Containment Priest. If it hits more land, it also has Monastery Mentor, which is a fast way to close out the game. All right, so we see Urborg, and we figure our opponent's on either the tran- is on the transformational sideboard plan of going for Dark Depths, which actually is pretty good against this deck. So one of the things I did, I actually did leave in. I actually think I brought in the Swords to Plowshares as well, um, because I-, I knew they were doing the Dark Depths plan. Um, so I have three in the deck uh, at this point in time, and I'm happy I do because I mean, well, they are mental misstep bait. It does buy a ton of tempo because, like I said, like this is a very slow combo. Like they put out a Thespian stage, put out an Urborg, then they're going to put out uh, Dark Depths, and that'll be that. I do go ahead and pitch uh, Preordain because I want Mental Misstep to protect my Swords to Plowshares against their uh, their Dark De- their Merit Lage token. Find a Tormod Script. Tormod Script is not looking like it's going to do a significant amount of work. And actually, I made a play error there. I probably should have left that in hand. I go ahead and attack here, forcing them to, uh... Actually, no, 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 I shouldn't have left it in my hand. And here's the reason why. What I didn't want to do is get into a position where I played it on my following turn, which is where I thought I would have wanted to play the Tormod script. But then I have to Swords to Plowshares, a Merit Lage, and if they Mental Misstep my Swords to Plowshares, I'll have to Mental Misstep their Mental Misstep. And then, if they have, um... Mind Break Trap, they just, like, win the game on the spot. Well, they they win... Yeah, they're going to win, because I don't have two white mana to cast another Swords of Plowshares. So, the reason I cast the Tormod Script out on that turn is because I didn't want to cast it out on my next turn, but I knew within two turns' time, I would actually want it on the board, as opposed to trying to save it for m- m- Monastery Mentor uh, Fodder. Because I'll draw more Monastery Mentor Fodder if they... 
I know I have this plan answered. If they just rando drop a Bazaar and start going to town, I want to have that plan answered as well, because if they can get ahead early with Bazaar, and I have to react to it with a Tormod script, and they already have some number of creatures down from it, it's already pretty bad for me. So basically, I need to keep the board clear. They go ahead and Cabal Therapy. They name uh, Force of Will, which doesn't do anything. I let that one through. I don't try to mental misstep it. Go ahead and drop another Containment Priest here to up the beat down. They are at 33 life, which is not a small amount. But they've gone all in on this Dark Depths plan, and it has failed them, so now they pretty much lose the game. Um, it's kind of how it goes. So I just I draw random, junky artifacts and just play them to make Mentor huge. They play a Petrified Field, which is moderately interesting because it's not going to work with Tormod's Crypt. find another Tormod's Crypt, which is just more flack for the Mentor. I go ahead and use my first Tormod's Crypt to get rid of the land the Dark Depths are trying to get, which could have worked with the uh, uh, Vampire Hexmage, and beat down for a bunch. Now, they were at like 35 or whatever, like two turns ago, now they're at 13. So this is just Mentor being Mentor and doing Mentor things. Um, they discard here. I play land. Uh, cast Swords of Plowshares targeting my Mentor. Cast uh, Metal Misstep targeting my Swords of Plowshares. And I have, I believe, Exaxes. Yeah. So that's 6, 10, 14. I have, neg I have negative 1. So that is game 2. Game 3 is actually fairly interesting in this one. So, that first opener had no graveyard hate. This opener is bad, but it has a way to slow them down. Um, it also has a land on top, because I scryed at top, and I'm very happy about that, because I'm just going to cast my mental misstep and get on with my life here. <laughs> so, a little bit greedy, um, won't lie, but seeing Ancestral, I'm like, hey, if I hit any land, like, and this deck has a significant amount of lands, like, I'll likely be able to cast that thing. Um, of course, we draw that thing, which is a clunker. Uh, believe I bottom. No, I top J or Dak. Dak's not bad because it can get rid of this Blightsteel Colossus and turn it into a real card. It also can fuel Delve if I find a Delve card. And it pitches to Force of Will, which is not bad because I only have three blue cards in my hand, one of which is Mental Misstep, and I'd like to keep it. So, interesting note here. This is this game gets a little interesting. I could have uh, Tormod scripted them to prevent the Icarid, but because they only they don't have any they have one dredger in there. Um and they only had two creatures they could use to get the Icarid out. I assume the risk and allow them to make the zombie and hit me for three, because it's not a very fast clock. If they try to go ham with their bizarre, then I'll just pop the Tormod script. Um, you know, but I'm not going to pop the Tormod script here, because I don't have a way to really stop them. But I do have a way to stop one creature. They cast uh, their uh, Cabal Therapy here out of the graveyard. I mental misstep this. They mental misstep back. I believe, again, they say Force of Will. Oh, they say Monastery Mentor. So, this is one of those things. Like, I... I I, I just... I don't know. Like, people use Cabal Therapy really weird, in my opinion. Like, if you use Cabal Therapy, it's generally very difficult, unless your opponent's made some very fishy plays, to actually name a restricted card. Monastery Mentor's a one of in my deck. So, like, you know... I. I have an equal chance of drawing that as I do Blightsteel Colossus. Given one of them I always want to draw, one of them I never want to draw, you know, the likelihood is the same. And rarely do I draw Blightsteel Colossus, rarely do I draw, you know, and have on curve Monastery Mentor with this deck. Normally I have to play Control until I get Monastery Mentor can just establish inevitability with him. So, I don't like guessing that. I think Force of Will was the right guess. I mental misstepped him there because, you know, I wanted to get a misstep out of their hand because I think Swords is going to be relevant at some point, and also because I really don't want to have Force of Will names. I think I'm going to want that at some point. Um, especially considering how little graveyard hate I have. So I go ahead and discard here. So I make a riskier play here. I ditch the Force of Will, drop the uh, Craft Digger's Cage, which means that they're done bringing the Icarid back at this point if they don't counter that. But it also means that the clock on me has increased a lot. So Mana Crypt is... I, I have to look at Mana Crypt as being 3 a turn. And I'm already at 11, but my opponent fails to attack me for some reason. Um, of course, I lose the flip. Never lucky, right? I go ahead and draw here, uh, ditch a uh, an island and a Swords of Plowshares, cast out the Jace, brainstorm, put uh, the um, Black Lotus and the land on top, and keep STP up. It's possible I should have STP'd on my turn just to prevent a draw step. They have another mental misstep, so we have fought through uh, two of their mental missteps at this point. And unfortunately, I take the two damage there, which is relevant because it takes me from 10 to uh, 8, which means that uh, Crypt can kill me in three flips as opposed to four. Um, I do find the Swords of Plowshares here. They have 
a, a force of will, I just go ahead and hard cast force of will here. <laughs> um, because I actually do want this thing dead, because if they hit me again with it, then that means one crypt flip will kill me. Five is a lot better than uh, than three here, obviously, because I'd rather be able to lose or afford to be able to afford to lose a crypt flip. Right now what I'm trying to do is find Tinker. So I can get rid of the Mana Crypt and find the Voltaic Key. So I go ahead and draw here first the DAC, draw discard loot. Um, discard the Volk and the Metal Misstep. Still a 5, won my first flip, which is good. I have lost two so far, um, which I'm happy about. I do go ahead and dig through time here. I forget to look at their hand and realize they're on zero cards, so I tinker... Which I'm going to do this anyways, but I, I I think I named Blightsteel Colossus and like failed to find it because I already had the uh, Voltaic Key in hand. Uh, but this is game. My opponent, for some reason, makes me play it out. I guess they're frustrated. I don't know. I've, I have beaten them three times in a row, which is probably frustrating. Uh, but at this point, Jace does what he does, and I don't even bother taking other game actions other than like playing cards and so I have to discard because it takes the same amount of time. Um, and just continue to Jace the top of their library and take extra turns and leave a Serum Powder on top and eventually give them a zero card uh, deck. Um, go ahead and put him to one, and I Tormod's Crypt their uh, their graveyard just to make sure they're doubly dead. So they, all they have left is four lands, and their entire library is, is exiled in the exile zone, and their graveyard as well. Um, for, for lulls, I guess. Because they made me do it. I did that. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So anyways, uh, some Monastery Mentor, older build. Um, I think I like the newer builds better, the ones that run a few more Planeswalkers, run like Fiery Confluence main. Those are pretty interesting decks. They're actually pretty fun to play. Um, this one's a little older. Um, it's it's more set up just to go all in on Mentor. Uh, but I think it runs a little less optimally than like the newer lists do because it just doesn't have the volume of actual Monastery Mentors as it used to. Uh, but obviously you used to run four of them. And you know if you had Monastery Mentor on turn two or whatever, you probably won the game because you just play like two other zero man artifacts, Cantrip, and you've already got you know 10 power on the board, and that's uh, that's pretty much how it used to go. Um, so anyways, uh, Vault, Vault Key gets this last game. Um, some Monastery Mentor beats in the in the first one. Hope you guys are in the second one, rather. The first one we just lost abysmally because it's Dredge, and, you know, Dredge is going to beat big blue decks, or Monastery Mentor decks, basically blue decks, pretty much almost every game one, um, unless they get a really lucky draw, like I said, involving the Time Vault, Key, or like a turn one Blightsteel. So anyways, I think uh, yeah, maybe we'll do one more. I forget what I played Prey Seeker with here. Let's take a look. Probably P.O. Storm with a single function. Well, it does not appear that it wants to function. Quick pause, guys. We'll wait for Moto. Oh, there it goes. Never mind. Let us see. What do we have? Oh, no, no. We played Oath. Um, I just did another video on Oath yesterday. I don't really feel like recapturing Oath. Uh, we won the game, but... um. Yeah, it's Oath. Oath, another deck I really enjoy. I think it's a really cool control deck, but I'm not going to go over that again because we did one yesterday, and um, I think we'll leave it at that. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed, and um, yeah, this is vintage content um, on my channel. Um, if this is a format you enjoy, it's more mainstream than some of the stuff I do, which is generally 93, 94. Started pre-modern. Uh, Singleton, probably my favorite format, but, you know, um, I kind of want to jump into some different different realms and provide some of my own insights, you know, whether they be useful to you or not, you know, um, well, that's for you to decide, and hopefully if they are, you continue watching and, uh, and subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, enjoy, and take care now.